Welcome back to the Game Collection. Trails of Cold Steel 3 is the game that fans hail as one of the greatest in the franchise, where things really go off the rails. Does Trails of Cold Steel 3 hold up to the hype? Let's find out. I am Super Derek, and this is Trails of Cold Steel 3. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3 was released in 2017 in Japan for the PlayStation 4, then brought over to the US in 2019, eventually receiving a port to PC and Nintendo Switch in 2020. Around the time of its original release, Kondo stated the game could be a good entry point for newcomers to the series. While I understand the sentiment, this reviewer respectfully disagrees. Trails of Cold Steel 3 takes place about a year following the events of Cold Steel 2. During that time, our protagonist, Reen, has become a dog of the Erebonian military. For reasons that remain unclear at the conclusion of Cold Steel 2, Reen finds himself working for the Imperial Army. Perhaps he felt a sense of duty or responsibility to try and moderate the actions of the Imperial Army from within. Whatever the reason, though, between the end of Cold Steel 2 and the beginning of the third, Reen participated in what was known as the Northern War, a conflict within the Northern Republic of North Ambrio, which resulted in its annexation. Now heralded as a national hero of Erebonia, Reen, the Ashen Chevalier, begins a new role as an instructor at a new branch campus of Thor's Military Academy in Leaves. How will Reen balance his ongoing duties with the Empire as the Ashen Chevalier while guiding the growth of the newest ragtag group of students to join Thor's famous Class 7? The overall story of Trails of Cold Steel 3 to me felt initially like a very somber one, with Reen taking on the mantle of the Ashen Chevalier and coming to grips with his role in the annexation of North Umbria, coupled with coping with grief and being separated from his friends, Reen has most assuredly lost his groove. This really resonated with me personally, having lived through some of my low lows when I had thought that I had made it to the happily ever after. Friends drift apart, sacrifices have to be made, and to see Cold Steel 3 get real like that was bittersweet, especially seeing how that affected the way Reen interacted with the new Class 7, balancing his selfless and at times rebellious nature with his new role as the literal adult in the room. But if this were simply a story about Rain rearing some troubled teens, we'd just be watching an adaptation of Stand and Deliver. Yet Trails of Cold Steel 3 delivers much more than just personal drama, serving up a feast of political intrigue alongside a heaping helping of armed and mechanical combat against the looming Ouroboros and their continued machinations spinning away feverishly in the shadows. All of these elements culminate in a spectacular, unforgettable showdown that packs an emotional punch. The cast of characters of Trails of Cold Steel 3 expands wildly from the established characters of Cold Steel 2, between the several new members of Class 7 plus the dozens of students from other classes. Add to that familiar faculty and staff members, welcome faces to be sure, and you've got quite an impressive ensemble. Despite my initial reservations, Cold Steel 3 succeeded remarkably well in making me care about all of these new faces. To top it off, Cold Steel 3 even managed to endear me to a character I had previously written off. On the subject of these characters, I would also like to laud the fact that all of the major voices behind the first two Cold Steel games have made a return to reprise their roles. Normally this would be a given, but due to the change in localization company from Xseed to NIS America, you can't take these kinds of things for granted. And by and large, each voice actor continues to knock it out of the park in Cold Steel 3, with only an errant line here or there where the delivery didn't quite fit the mood. Barely even worth mentioning. But if I didn't at least say something negative here, people might start to wonder how honest I'm being here, because from here on out, it's all positives. 
Combat in Trails of Cold Steel 3 will feel extremely familiar for returning players. The link system established in Cold Steel 1 and 2 returns, improving game flow by automatically re-establishing links. It's a subtle change, but as someone who constantly forgot to establish links during combat in Cold Steel 1 and 2, it has a big impact on covering up some of those beginner's pitfalls. But the real standout feature are the Brave Orders and Break systems, which are brand new to Cold Steel 3. During combat, enemies have a break meter displayed alongside their health meter. Attacks, crafts, and arts all deal damage to the enemy health meters, but also take a toll on break meters as well. When an enemy break meter is depleted, each subsequent attack triggers a bonus follow-up attack from a linked companion. This continues until the enemy's next turn. Some attacks and crafts deal more damage to the break meter than the HP meter, and vice versa, and leveraging this to your advantage lends itself really well toward building up a flow state in combat in which you can dish out tons of damage without relinquishing a single turn to your enemies. The new Brave Order system complements the Break system by multiplying its effects. Brave Orders are essentially free actions characters can take once per turn prior to their action by spending Brave Points. These Brave Orders are various formations your characters call out that offer a variety of different buffs, some of which are extremely powerful, such as negating the casting times of arts, or multiplying the amount of break damage dealt to enemy meters, or decreasing the delay between your character's actions. Brave Orders are fueled by Brave Points, which accumulate as you perform follow-up attacks, and because of the break system, once those break meters are depleted, you are pretty much assured a full pool of Brave Points to draw from at all times. Mastering these systems can make you feel invincible, but if you crave a greater challenge, be prepared to restart the game on higher difficulty levels. As in previous entries in the Cold Steel series, much of the gameplay outside of combat in Cold Steel 3 involves a familiar rhythm. Spending time at school, engaging in optional and required side quests on free days in exchange for academic points and more. You can also spend your time fishing away the day in the newly revamped and improved fishing minigame. However, it's important to note that the fishing minigame is virtually unplayable until you've purchased several fishing rods. The starting rod that you're given simply isn't sufficient to catch most fish, leading to frustration. But once you've gone around that first beginner's hurdle, it's actually quite a bit of fun and doesn't take up too much of the player's time. The other real draw, pun intended, is the newly introduced in-game trading card game. Hold on, don't run off at the mention of a trading card game. I just... I usually don't enjoy them either, but this one, called Vantage Masters, is surprisingly fun and easy to learn. I probably wouldn't go out and buy an actual deck for myself or anything. I'm not sure there's enough depth there to hold a real enthusiast's attention for any amount of time, but as far as mini games go, it's pretty dang good. And while Trails of Cold Steel 3 takes place in the land of Erebonia, the game manages to mostly stick to uncharted territories that was not explored in Cold Steel 1 or 2. Because while most of Cold Steel 1 and 2 focus on the eastern half of Erebonia, Cold Steel 3 shifts focus to western Erebonia and beyond. Thor's Military Academy branch campus is situated in a small town of Leaves, which is just similar enough to Trista to spark waves of nostalgia, and if you're like me, waves of getting the layouts confused with Trista and getting lost. But being able to just quick travel to most points of interest of a given town helps on that front quite a bit. Even when exploring the city of Heimdall, a location we've got to explore in both Cold Steel 1 and Cold Steel 3, the zones we get to explore have very little overlap. So everything feels really bright and fresh still, but in the zones that do overlap, it's really nice to see the world got a minor glow up to match the minor upgrades in visual fidelity from the PlayStation 4 ports of Cold Steel 1 and 2. Though I'm sure players who experienced Cold Steel 1 and 2 on the PlayStation Vita were overwhelmed by the upgrade. And there are other regions of Zemuria that we get to revisit and explore that are beyond whatever I could have even expected. I would love to gush for a while about what a treat it was to retread some old stomping grounds, but for those who haven't played Cold Steel 3 yet, I'll just leave that as a little surprise for you.
visually, Trails of Cold Steel 3 is a step up from what I experienced in Cold Steel 1 and 2 on PlayStation 4. I do not think that this title fully leveraged the power of the PlayStation 4 for which it was developed, but I also understand that it was likely done for a couple of reasons, the first of which is to help provide a sense of continuity between Cold Steel arcs. If Cold Steel 3 had suddenly featured a huge visual improvement, that could cause some visual incongruity with its predecessors. So I understand the decision to stick to baby steps. The other reason is, of course, that while Cold Steel 1 and 2 were breakout hits for Falcom, compared to their earlier successes, Falcom is still a pretty small company and it has survived a long time by being frugal and slow moving in some ways. While I would someday love to see a more gorgeous game, for the time being I can say that these visuals do not prevent me from enjoying these games in the slightest. And with modest graphics come modest demands. While I played Cold Steel 3 on my PlayStation 5, I did not encounter any hitches, frame rates, or performance degradations that caught my ire. I did encounter a bug one time though near the end of the game that forced me to restart the game losing some progress. During a fight against a Jaeger group, all of my characters died, but for some reason, one of the party members was not removed from the turn order, but remained stuck at the bottom of the list forever, causing a loop where the Jaegers would take turns standing around with nothing to do. Luckily, I had saved relatively recently and only lost about 20 minutes of progress. However, I did encounter another bug earlier that could have been disastrous. At a certain point, Cold Steel 3 stopped creating new game saves for me when I would try to save the game. Luckily, I noticed this and was able to overwrite some older game saves first, but man, this could have been really awful. If you have a habit of constantly creating new save files, it may be worthwhile to double check that they were saved by trying to save again to make sure that the new save file is actually there. The soundtrack, Another Knockout by Falcom Sound Team JDK, proves to be a harmonious echo of the game's unfolding narrative. There's a delicate interplay of the music. The pulse-quickening intensity of battle themes such as Spiral of Erebos is beautifully contrasted by the gentle tranquility found in pieces like A New Morning. Each tune seems to capture the spirit of the locations familiar and new in an understated way that subtly deepens the player's immersion. Notably, the artful reprisals of themes from previous games infuses waves of nostalgia into the soundscape. The music, while delightful in its own right, also gracefully intertwines the game's narrative, adding a quiet layer of emotional resonance to the player's journey back through the Erebonian Empire. Trails of Cold Steel 3's difficulty level is, again, placed into the hands of the player, offering a selection of difficulties ranging from novice to nightmare that allows you to tailor the experience to your experience level. For the purpose of this review, I played on hard mode, a step down from nightmare, and found that when leveraging all of the mechanics I was mastering, I was able to steamroll most of the final bosses and one-shot most groups of enemies in the final dungeon. But this is because I was able to leverage my knowledge of previous games combat systems, strategies that already worked, and figured out ways to leverage the new break mechanics to such a degree that I suspect even players on nightmare mode would find the endgame manageable, assuming they make it over the brutal difficulty of the first several hours of the game where the players have fewer customization options to abuse. But I've said it before and I'll say it again, the fact that this game has a combat system that is so flexible is what makes it so dang fun. And the fact that I can devise strategies, implement them by giving characters new equipment and ornaments, and then immediately see how that plays out is such an addicting feeling. The game gives the players a set of tools and says, run wild, feel free to stack all of the effects you can scrounge together and see what happens. And I think that's the beauty of the combat of Cold Steel 3. It rewards players for figuring out strategies. It lets players feel smart by letting their own machinations manifest. Like some crazy Rube Goldberg machine that turns your party into a food processor that liquefies your enemies. One of the interesting aspects about combat that also bears mentioning is how the game has tied in certain combat abilities with each character's development, unlocking new abilities and special S-crafts as their own story and growth progresses. 
For instance, some of Reen's powers I leaned heavily upon in Cold Steel 2 were held back from the player at first in Cold Steel 3 due to his inability to fully control these wild powers. However, as his friends came together to help him focus those powers, a new ability eventually unlocked. But this wasn't simply a MacGuffin of convenience, instead becoming a central pillar to one of the main plot points of the game. Seeing the gameplay reflecting and integrating the story and character development was honestly super cool in hindsight. The gameplay balance of Cold Steel 3 feels about like a 70% balance of exploration, performing tasks and side quests, mini games, reading exposition, and about 30% combat, which I think is about on par with the balance struck in prior Cold Steel entries. There is a degree of replayability for fans of the game, expanding the number of bonding events that the player can experience on any given playthrough, allowing you to see all of the possible character arcs fully as you play the game. Of course, in this modern era of YouTube, where players can instead simply watch those bonding events in a compilation, it's a bit of a hard sale when you could instead spend your time playing other incredible RPGs. However, for those who loved Cold Steel 3 at launch and could not wait for Cold Steel 4 to come out, gosh, that wouldn't have been a terrible way to kill some time, I'm sure. Trails of Cold Steel 3 as the first entry in a new arc, kind of, follows the series tradition of ending on a world-shattering cliffhanger. A cliff that I'm not sure how much longer I can dangle off of. I need to see how this story concludes, so we'll be diving into the follow-up before long, I can tell you that much. How long can I hold out? Guess we'll find out next time in the Game Collection.